I think we can uh, start. Uh, I'm usually not a loudspeaker, so I don't know if you can hear me. If not, just shout, yeah. I don't know if this is needed. You can hear me fine, like this. Um, so, okay, welcome to my presentation about uh, history of Drupal. My name is Tamer Zobi, and I'm coming from Zagreb, Croatia. In my professional life, I'm a CTO at Web Solutions HR. It's a Drupal shop in Croatia. And also, I'm uh, running uh, and I'm president of Drupal Croatia Association. Uh, the motivation behind the, the today's presentation came from uh, Drupal's uh, recent 15th birthday, when I actually asked myself how much I know about Drupal uh, prior to when I start working with it. And I figured out very little. So I made this research and this presentation, so hopefully everybody could understand how Drupal evolved from uh, the message boarding system into a fully scaled uh, enterprise level CMS that we have in today, Drupal 8. And hopefully to have some fun with uh, this trip back in time. So in shortly we'll uh, be talking about uh, the web before Drupal, then uh, how Drupal survived the constant changes in the web industry, but it also helped uh, drive them. Uh, then uh, we'll see why and how Drupal was created, and we'll take a quick tour from Drupal 1 until the latest Drupal version, and we'll look at some key features like modules and uh, multilingual and nodes and how they evolve uh, through time. Uh, and at the end, we will see what the future will bring for Drupal. So basically, the web before Drupal it looked like this. Uh, it was uh, in the early 90s that we started to get the first websites online. They were built mostly using HTML and images. And then we got JavaScript in 95, CSS in 96. Then Flash got really popular uh, late in the 90s. And around that time, uh, we see many content management systems emerge, like Scoop, Vignette, PHP Nuke. And they, they were all very popular at some, uh, at some time uh, in past, but today they are all uh, obsolete and Drupal has outlived them all. So how come Drupal is still alive and others aren't? Uh, looking back 15 years in history, I think Drupal got four key concepts that not only made it survive, but it also helped drive uh, this industry. The first one is open source. Drupal is GPL licensed and this set the cornerstone for the community that we have today. Then it's the modularity. It's the concept of hooks and the modules that Drupal got from the very beginning. That's something that's, uh, that become uh, commonplace in uh, today platforms. Uh, then also the concept of having nodes rather than pages. It won't be actually like until uh, recently that we see with the rise of the mobile phones that web evolved less and less around the pages where uh, in the node-based approach, we can reuse the content in multiple ways on uh, multiple devices. And then it's the Drupal's constant evolution and reinvention over the backward compatibility. So from the earliest release, uh, Drupal uh, decided that it's okay to break uh, people code, but not the people's data. So why and how Drupal was created? I will quote uh, its uh, founder, Dries, who say, uh, for me, the history of Drupal is a chain of interesting surprises. And the first surprise actually began in 1908, when uh, this guy, a Belgian student, began constructing the internet site uh, so he could discuss some tech news with uh, his university friends. Then later, when uh, he finished the university, uh, he moved this intranet site to the internet so he could keep in touch with his friend. And therefore, on April 2000, drop.org was born. And actually, the name behind drop is, is a typo. Uh, when first registering his domain, uh, Dreis meant it to, to register Dorpje, which means uh, village in Dutch. But he misspelled it and he got drop, and it actually sounded fine, so he went with it. And later, when he was naming his software, then he back-translated Drop into Dutch, so he got Drupal, which phonetically sounded as Drupal. And then, uh, like two years before the new year of 2001, 
it's now in this legendary first commit, uh, Dries baptized his software Drupal, and he also added the GPL license to it. And then only after two release candidates, uh, on 15th of January 2005, 2001st, uh, we got Drupal uh, 1.0, which was a fully featured CMS for community driven or portal sites. It was uh, mainly uh, built after some other popular message boarding systems at the time. It used like concept of stories and books for, for managing the content. Fun, it didn't have the menu router, so you had to access everything to, through the set of PHP files like account PHP or admin PHP. And it had this funny naming for guest users, it's anonymous chicken. And one of the important first features that it had was uh, the database abstraction layer. So at the moment it supported the MySQL only, but it, it was easy and straightforward to port it to other databases, which will soon happen. And from first version it had fu functions like DB query and DB fetch objects, which are still used even in Drupal 7. It didn't have the install script, so there was an SQL dump, so you had to manually import it. There were about 15 database tables only, and when you would import this, you would get your very own first uh, Drupal 1 site. Um, I had to install some uh, very ancient uh, technology to get this screenshot, like PHP 3 and Apache 1 point something. So it had few options, and those options were you could like submit the stories, you could have diaries, you could have the account, so there was login and registration, you could have search, you could comment on the content, it was all in there. This is an example of entering a new content in Drupal 1. As you see, it was very simple, no WYSIWYG editor. Um, there was just one filter and very few options. And also from uh, its first release, Drupal had the vision of modularity. So when developing Drupal, it became clear to Dries that he wanted to have a system which will be flexible so everybody could uh, customize it to its needs and likings. So therefore the idea of modules was born. And at the moment the modules were very primitive. It was just one uh, PHP script uh, which would contain uh, some uh, routines. And it was located in the modules directory. And this is actually the administration page for the modules. As you see, there were only 18 core modules at the moment, and you couldn't actually enable, disable them from the user interface. So you had to go and copy or delete them from the modules directory. And actually, as we see uh, in first few versions, uh, Drupal had separated admin from the client side interface. So actually, the admin interface was just, um, it didn't have the team, it was just a bunch of configuration links in, in the header. And then uh, how those modules worked? Well, the idea was to be able to run the random code at a given places in the engine, and those places were called hooks. So here is the list of all Drupal 1 hooks. There were only seven of them, and interestingly, three of them are still in use today, and those are hook uh, cron, hook help, and uh, hook block. So also from first version, uh, Drupal tried to separate uh, the backend from the frontend. So we got a teaming system, which was simple, but yet flexible. So you could customize uh, things like colors, uh, layouts, uh, and even the position of most of the boxes, or today called blocks. Uh, team, just as the module files, uh, they were very simple. It was just a single PHP uh, file. Uh, called dot team, which was located in the teams folder, and it was implementing a team class which had to extend one of these uh, five PHP functions like header or footer. And as well from the first version, Drupal uh, is open source, it's the GPL licensed, and uh, each and every user could become a contributor. Uh, it was done by using the patches for the content control instead of directly committing to at the time it was a CVS uh, repository. It provided better amount of control without actually touching the 
the branch. This is something that's still in uh, use today. Um, however, at the time, the patches would be like submitted directly to Drys in plain text through the email. And at the moment, the only Drupal 1 site that was actually running was uh, the drop.org itself. And soon the discussion about Drupal will begin to take place in here. So then after uh, another two months, we got Drupal 2, which added a very important feature, which is the translation, and introduced the famous T function, which is still in use in uh, today's Drupal. However, at the moment, to add the new language, it required you to manually edit the configuration file and table prefixes in SQL. And you couldn't actually have uh, multiple languages, so it was like you could have only one language. And some other features, we got uh, some better uh, permissions, which is the user access function, uh, still in use um, in Drupal 7. I think in Drupal 8 it was uh, removed. It added some, uh, some things that didn't got popular, something like user ratings. Then we got the sections. This uh, will actually later evolve in a taxonomy module. And then, uh, except for the logo, nothing much changed in Drupal 2, just maybe a few more links, but basically very similar to first version. And this is an example of um, viewing the user account from the admin side. And as you can see, uh, many fields have same or similar name as in today's Drupal. And then uh, at the time, the first Drupal site started to appear online. This is the screenshot from Global Greens from 2001. And at the moment, all the websites were very similar to each other. Um, it was just the teaser of content with some sidebars left or right. And there were no uh, landing pages. And then uh, the discussion drop.org began trending toward Drupal itself. So Dries created like a special section called Drupal uh, Engine, where, uh, so that all the people could comment about Drupal in that section. And in total, like Drupal 2 had like 22 core modules and it took just two months to develop. And then uh, after another six months, we got Drupal 3. Now the big change in here is that everything is based on nodes. So in the first few versions, Drupal had concept of stories and books to store the content. And this worked well when uh, Drupal was used for the community sites like uh, drop.org, but as the time passed, system evolved and uh, more uh, forms of content were added. So we had people needing forums, somebody needed blogs, somebody needed some custom pages. So at, at the moment, uh, lots of functionality was duplicated in the code to make that work. So uh, people started to discuss that and since Drupal was already modular, it made uh, sense to make a framework for the content. So therefore the node was born around uh, which all the content types would be based. And it won't be until uh, 10 years later when we got the rise of the mobile that we see that web actually evolved less and less around the pages and it's more about the node-based approach so that we can reuse the content in, in multiple ways. And then uh, when you install Drupal 3, it's basically we got a new team and some uh, more links than in the previous versions. And also the admin side, it still remained the same. However, now you can, uh, uh, yeah, this is the administrative permission page. And if you take a look, now you can like add the roles and assign permission for each role. And basically this is the same user interface that we still use today, even in Drupal 8. And then shortly after Drupal 3 is released, Drys decided to provide a specific place uh, for all the Drupal-related discussion, which became overwhelming for his drop.org site. So on the December of 2001, he opened uh, Drupal.org. In total, uh, Drupal 3 had 26 core modules and it took half a year to develop. And then uh, basically Drupal continued to evolve quietly until the early 2002 
uh, when Dries initiated a relationship with Jeremy Andrews. Uh, he was a uh, an author of uh, kerneltrap.org. It was a very popular uh, Linux news uh, portal, and his site would periodically go down uh, due to heavy traffic. So Dry suggested him to switch from PHP Nuke to Drupal, and so he did. Uh, somewhere in February of 2002, he switched to Drupal 3. And this relationship proved to be success. Not only Jeremy became one of top Drupal contributors, for uh, his conversion, he wrote Throttle module, which will soon be included in the core. But also, he reported about his early conversion to Drupal on uh, kernel trap. So many people from uh, the technical worlds uh, now begin to heard about Drupal. And then, uh, in the June of the same year, after nine months being in development, Drupal 4 is born and now there were already hundreds of major sites that were running on Drupal and we started to get contributors from uh, Europe and from the US so it become really like an international open source project. As you see Drupal 4 it's, uh, it's uh, we got some new team we also got new uh, logo so there, there was no more drop org in the logo and then as uh, as was the introduction of uh, nodes a big thing in Drupal 3 uh, so is the hierarchical tagging system of uh, taxonomy big thing in Drupal 4 uh, so until now Drupal used meta tags and attributes to classify the content uh, in a parent-child relationship, but those relationships weren't being used well. So there was actually a huge discussion on the Drupal.org, which resulted in uh, the birth of taxonomy module, a similar one that's uh, in use today. Basically, it, it had like a global uh, taxonomy, which was the vocabulary, and it had the user bookmarks, which was the ability to tag the, the nodes with specific tax and it was actually at this point that Drupal started to look more like an enterprise um, content management system than a message boarding that it was in first versions so we see the adding a new content in Drupal 4 it became more powerful so we have stuff like uh, content revisions teasers uh, we have statuses like published unpublished promoted to front page Basically, many of, uh, of these options are uh, still available even in uh, today's versions of Drupal. And uh, now also, a uh, big thing is that you can actually enable or disable the modules through the user interface. And this was actually done uh, in a way so each module had to implement hook system to register itself. And later this hook will become the info file or info YAML file in Drupal 8. And Drupal 4 also had some uh, concepts that uh, didn't live long. There was this XML RPC support, which allowed users to log in to Drupal from other sites like Jabber or Yahoo logins. It never actually lived long. Maybe this will become popular later with single sign-ons and uh, social networks. Um, and there was also support for the Blogger API. That was just something that was very popular at the moment. As of Drupal 7, this was actually removed from Drupal core. And then with version 4, it was decided that uh, Drupal will have... Uh, that it Drupal will... Yeah, this is duplicated slide. <laughs> So it was decided that Drupal will have uh, uh, versions like 4.1, 4.2. So actually, we, in the February of 2003, we got Drupal 4.1. It added uh, some useful things like profile module, so you could uh, add fields uh, to the registration forms. However, those were like hard-coded. There was no user interface. You had to actually do it through the module. Um, it also had some concepts that didn't live long this was the throttle module that's the one that jeremy wrote for uh, his conversion it was actually an auto congestion module so it would detect like uh, surge in the incoming traffic and then you could decide to disable images on site or blocks or even modules 
and as of Drupal 7, this was uh, removed from core because today there are like far better uh, tools to to optimize your site, like uh, aggressive uh, page caching, or maybe even the servers are more powerful for than they were in 2003. Then after another half year, we got Drupal 4.2. Now we have Visivig Editor. We have support for Microsoft SQL. So at the moment, Drupal still didn't have the install script, so it was actually coming with three SQL dumps. And it was at this moment that people will start to discuss how to automate this process, so we will soon get install script that we have today. Then we got Node APIs and uh, X template, so all, all the core teams were converted to use the X template instead of the custom uh, class. And also, we got some other features like uh, clean URLs, uh, still very useful today. Uh, and we have some first ideas leading to some sort of menu routing. Now everything is accessed through index.php and we use the famous Q parameter, which still we use today, which would then call the hook page in each module to see which module wants to implement this page. And basically now we could access the nodes in this nicer way, like node slash view slash node ID, instead of directly going to node PHP script with some ugly uh, query parameters. And then uh, in that same year, during the summer, uh, interest in Drupal got a significant boost when it helped uh, build uh, promotional websites for Howard Dean. He was one of uh, 2004 US presidential election candidates. So they uh, they made something called the Dean Space, which was actually a Drupal distribution. It was a pre-installed set of modules and content, which anybody could install to promote uh, the Dean's campaign. And as his campaign grew in the US, we saw a huge uh, amount of activity on Drupal.org. And then, uh, during the 2004, this is the screenshot of Dean Space. As we see there in the footer, it says uh, build on Drupal. And this is actually when, where many people first time heard about Drupal. Then eventually Howard Dean didn't get elected. So in uh, July of 2004, it was like officially announced that the Dean Space was dead. But there were many uh, Drupal uh, uh, volunteers that work on these projects. So now they begin to uh, to work on their uh, own uh, uh, Drupal distributions. So one of them was uh, a civic space, which, uh, which was a very popular uh, set of tools and modules uh, in Drupal. And actually those developers will work closely with Drupal developers to push the idea of having uh, Drupal distributions instead of having uh, uh, copies of Drupal uh, stored somewhere else. And eventually the distributions will be added as of Drupal 5. And then um, in the meantime, Drupal was struggling between four point something versions. So then after only three months, we got Drupal uh, 4.3. Uh, it added the path module. Uh, which introduced the URL aliases, so still very useful even today. Uh, it uh, introduced database prefixing, so now on the shared hosting you could install uh, multiple uh, Drupal instances by using one database. It introduced some other stuff like having a breadcrumbs and mess node operations. And then after another five months, we got Drupal 4.4. Now it has the file API, so you can finally upload the attachments. Um, it also introduced better teamability of Drupal. So now uh, we have all, all the team functions starting with team underscore. And uh, later uh, they will actually become uh, the team function as we know today. And also, as the number of the contributors is growing, we are starting to see more and more Drupal modules and more advanced modules. So actually, here in 2004, we got the first e-commerce module, which was the whole set of sub-modules to transform Drupal website into an e-commerce. And then uh, Drupal 4.5, after the seven months, uh, 
Now it's finally possible to configure the menus. You can add or edit the menu links, which was something that wasn't possible in the previous uh, Drupal versions. So this is where the hook menu, probably one of the most important hooks uh, until it was removed in Drupal 8 and replaced with the Symfony router. Um, also we got the tab-based user interface, which is uh, something uh, that Drupal is uh, famous of today. Um, you could assign multiple roles for each users and you could finally customize the user profiles through the user interface. So it's now possible to add additional fields to the registration forms. And now we see that uh, the admin user interface started to look more similar uh, like today's one. It's a tab-based interface. And also a new thing is that uh, the admin and the client side now they use the, basically the same team. And then uh, finally since Drupal 2, we saw some major improvements on uh, the translation feature. So now managing the translation is done completely through the administration interface. So no more manually editing the table prefixes or the configuration files to add the new language. Uh, it also added the support to import and export the translations by using the get text uh, format. And here is the, the translation interface where you can basically add new languages, import, export them, set the default ones. And then um, on the February uh, of 2005, now Drupalistas, they gathered in uh, Antwerp, Belgium, which is now known as the uh, first DrupalCon. At the moment, there were only 15 attendees. And because the internet connection was usually not good, people would download the whole contributed repository with all the modules and then work offline at the conference, which is today something impossible with over 30,000 modules. And then uh, later after half a uh, year in being developed, during the April of 2005, we got Drupal 4.6, which finally added the PHP 5 support. So uh, also new thing is that you could run now multiple sites from a single code base. And it added some other useful things like contact form and image API for better image handlings. And now we start to see that some of the um, famous projects start to use Drupal. This is the screenshot from uh, NASA using it for one of uh, their own projects. And then in uh, May of 2006, uh, Drupal 4.7 was born. Now at the moment, there were over 300 contributed modules. There were already 55,000 Drupal websites and it took more than a year to develop the Drupal 4.7. There have been over 300 contributors and more than 1,500 patches. Uh, it introduced the major usability improvements and Drupal core functionality. And this was the great year for Drupal, as also the later this year the views module will be born. And Drupal 4.7 basically got lots of JavaScript and Ajax. Ajax was still relatively new technology, started uh, a year earlier with Google for their Gmail apps. It also introduced a new forms API. It's an early version of uh, today form API. Uh, however, rewriting the Drupal form uh, forms proved to be uh, a huge, uh, uh, huge frustration for the people because it broke hundreds of uh, contributed modules and it took a uh, much longer time to port them to 4.7 than first they uh, anticipated. Uh, however, uh, at the end, the payoff was huge and Drupal just become more modular. Um, and this is the another key concept of the Drupal success is the constant uh, evolution and reinvention in favor of uh, the backward compatibility. 
Also, we see some uh, module improvements. So basically, from this version, modules can install the database files uh, through the install file. Uh, uh, before this, if the module needed to install uh, a new database, it would need to provide an SQL dump and the instructions on how to manually import it. And also the teaming got uh, big improvements in 4.7. So there was the Adrian Rousseau who wrote PHP template specifically for use with Drupal. And uh, all the X template engine was uh, removed and all the core uh, teams were reported to use the PHP template. And it worked by using the TPL PHP files to, uh, to overwrite the Drupal team underscore something functions. And basically with the little knowledge of PHP, you could build a very advanced uh, layouts, which was excellent choice. And the uh, PHP template was used uh, until Drupal 8 when it will be replaced by even something better, which is called Tweak. And now see more and more popular sites begin to use uh, Drupal. This is the MTV Co UK. PlayStation Asia, Hillary Clinton. And in total, uh, at the end of Drupal 4, we, we got 31 core modules. And in total, for all 4.x releases, it took uh, about five years to develop. And then after more than eight months of development, Drupal 5 got released on the Drupal 6th birthday. And since Drupal 4 was released back in 2002, the community felt confident to increase the major version to Drupal 5. Uh, so we, uh, we held almost 500 contributors and over 1,000 patches. And at the end of Drupal 5 lifecycle, there were over 2,500 contributed modules on Drupal.org. So Drupal uh, 5, it introduced the web-based installer. So there was no more manually importing the SQL dump that came with Drupal. Uh, and it also checked the runtime requirements, like the versions of PHP, or if you're missing some library, basically um, almost the same install script that we use today. Uh, it also reorganized the module structure. So now modules have their own directories. And they can have their own uh, files, like JavaScript, CSS, uh, install and info files. And uh, all the contrib modules were removed outside of the modules directory, so they're not mixed with the core modules anymore. They're now inside all modules, for example. Uh, now we also have the info files, so modules can have the dependencies on other modules, which is something that you couldn't have before. And this is actually where uh, Drupal became uh, more like building uh, Lego bricks. Uh, because you, you, to get a feature, you would need to install a couple of modules and build it yourself instead of that each module builds a feature, which is something like a plugin system in the WordPress. And also the big thing was uh, the pluggable cache backends. So now you could replace the database caching with some uh, other caching types like memcache or file caching. Uh, also the Drupal was an early adapter of jQuery. So all the existing JavaScript in Drupal core was rewritten to use the jQuery. Um, today, the jQuery is used on more than 60% of top million websites. Uh, and also, finally, we got the Drupal distributions. Um, this was something that the developers of uh, Civic Space closely worked with Drupal.org to push the idea of having official uh, downloadable packages so people could focus on uh, on their own specific vision. Also, we got the Garland, which become the new default team, and we got the CSS pre-processing, so now you could uh, cache uh, and compress all the CSS files on site, so you can make it even faster. And this is uh, how Drupal 5 uh, looks with the Garland team. Basically, now it started to look more like nowadays Drupal. And then uh, with this release, we are seeing more and more Fortune 500 companies begin to use Drupal. Um, so we have uh, like Warner and Yahoo and OpenOffice and 
folks, and they all uh, launch their websites on Drupal. In total, there were uh, 29 core modules in Drupal 5, and it took uh, a little bit more than eight months to release. And then uh, after the 13 months uh, of developing, uh, Drupal 6 got released in February of 2008. And actually, Drupal 6 reached the end of life recently. That was on February 2016. However, still estimated 100,000 of websites are using Drupal 6. So they should be moving to Drupal 8 soon. Um, at the end of its life cycle, there were over 7,000 contributed modules and more than 600 custom teams in the repository. Uh, the whole Drupal menu system was being rewritten from scratch, so it became more efficient and more powerful than before. We got better installer, we got drag and drop administration, improved security. There was uh, this uh, update module, which will notify you about new module releases or new security releases, so you can keep up to date. And then on October 2009, White House uh, launched on Drupal, and this is actually when people started to start, uh, started to feel that Drupal is a, a secure uh, content management system because the White House did a very strict security auditing in choosing their uh, their CMS. In total, there were like 34 core modules, and took about 13 months to release, and then. Uh, 10 years after the first Drupal was released, on January of 2011, we got Drupal 7. So now Drupal is used to build any kinds of sites, like from blogs and microsites to the enterprise level web applications. Currently, there are over 12,000 contributed modules, more than 700 teams, and 200 distributions in the Drupal repository. And these numbers are changing. I had this presentation like three months ago in uh, Drupal Camp London, and like the number of modules was like 11,000. So there are like 1,000 new modules for Drupal 7 in the meantime. And we got the complete architecture switch from Node to Entity. So now everything is an entity from content types, taxonomy, users. Even you can create your own custom entity types. And now we can say it's all really about building the web apps. And then on the November of 2015, after five years of development, we got Drupal 8 released. And there were over 150 release uh, parties all over the world. And this is how we celebrate it in uh, our company. Basically, Drupal 8 has over 200 new features. Uh, it's uh, many improvements. The the whole core was uh, was rewritten in Symfony. Uh, basically, I won't talk about it in here. Go and see some some of our other sessions to learn more about these exciting new features. And then, uh, starting with Drupal 8, uh, Drupal core releases will move to new uh, release schedule. So we'll have uh, a semantic versioning. Uh, meaning that we'll have versions like um, 8.1, 8.2, and each of them will uh, have new features while being the backward compatible. So actually on um, 20th of April, we got Drupal 8.1, which uh, shipped with big pipe in core, which is pretty awesome. If you didn't try it, you should. And soon, uh, later this year in October, uh, we'll have Drupal 8.2, with some even more exciting features coming up. And basically, Drupal 9, uh, when it happens, it will actually be the last 8.x release, but just without the backward compatibility. And then for the end, uh, let's see some graphs on uh, how uh, Drupal evolved over the time. This is uh, the number of uh, core modules Basically, the first version of Drupal had only 18 core modules, and then this was usually yeah, like steadily growing. Drupal 7 had almost more than 40, 
and now in Drupal 8 we have more than 60 modules in the core. And how the number of database tables grow? Uh, Drupal 1 is the lowest with 15 tables only. Drupal 3 already doubled this to almost 40 tables. This was generally growing up until Drupal 5 had some cleanups, so it reduced it back to about 40. And then Drupal 7 is like the record holder with, I think, uh, 66 database tables. Drupal 8 has uh, something less, so it, it reduced this a little bit. And uh, how long it took between uh, the major releases of Drupal? Uh, the two months is the lowest record, and that's between Drupal 1 and 2. And then four point something versions had some shorter release cycles. Uh, with 4.7 and Drupal 6 taking more than a year to develop. And when you add the release times of Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, you see how all other uh, uh, times look insignificant. This is because uh, in total, Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 took more time to develop than all the previous 13 uh, releases of Drupal. So hopefully this will uh, get you the scope of how large Drupal 8 is and how much it has evolved over the time. So I want to thank you for uh, listening. Uh, you can get uh, my slides from um, our website, websolutions.hr slash Drupal history. Um, there also you will find the links to GitHub repository where you can browse and uh, download the old releases like Drupal 1.0 and, and 2 and so on, which are not tagged or available on, on Drupal.org. Um, and you can also follow us uh, on Twitter. And uh, for the end, I would like uh, also to thank the sponsors of this event. And uh, I'll be happy to hear any questions. Yeah, thank you.